Welcome to Urban Homestead Radio, preserving a homegrown way of life and inspiring others to bring the revolution home. Thanks to the support of our sponsor, Lehman's. For over 60 years, they've provided practical, non-electrical tools, appliances, and home goods. When technology fails, their products will certainly work. Check out their website at lehmans.com. That's L-E-H-M-A-N-S dot com. Let's go down to the urban homestead. Hi, homesteaders. I'm your host, Annie Easterbase from the Urban Homestead in Pasadena, California. I want to wish everyone a happy new year. We've sort of been on, quote, winter break. Um, breaking here at the homestead means finishing <laughs> a lot a of projects and uh, cleaning up and just getting ready for the new year. So happy new year to everyone. Um, we made it to the end of 2020 and we've begun 2021. So in all that, uh, there's no really words to describe what we've gone through this last um, year, but it's been a roller coaster for sure, but we want to thank everybody for joining in and tuning into the podcast. And we appreciate um, you guys' support and positive feedback. So we really, really appreciate it, especially during these times. So today I'm joined by um, Justin, my brother, and Jordan, my sister. We're going to kind of just do a little brief, maybe highlights, low lights of 2021, of what's all right, 2020, 2020, sorry. <laughs> 2020 and dreams and of 2020. Dreams of 2021. Wow, 2020. Yeah, it's like all these. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, so maybe we'll just go around um, to start Justin first. What are some highlights that that was in 2020? <laughs> what did they say? 2020 is hindsight, so now it's all hindsight. Yeah, so all hindsight is 2020. <laughs> the, so this, the whole well, year is What would you have changed? Everything. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Thank you. If they've been following us, I think they know a little bit about what happened. And mm-hmm. I think we had a a great cucumber year. They were eight feet tall, two feet long. Um, not so great basil year into the summer crops. Um, and just diversifying helped us through a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we were thrown for a loop because of our catering companies were closed. So stu- things the that were... were really... Big. The pandemic shut down the catering company they've been selling to for 20, 25 years. Well, like so, a second, a second customer ever, right? Yeah, and there were, we grew things specifically for them. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. And it was, it's just sadly, sadly, we heard from the chef that we sold to. I mean, it's been in business for over 30 years, and they said they don't know their future. So it's kind of sad, too. Yeah. Like, it could be an end of a Era for long some, relationship with them, and just to see so. that go you know, one and there the were old, a local company. One of the old establishments of Pasadena. Yeah. So, no, yeah, it's been no up no and fault down. of their own or our yeah. fault or anything. No, there's no fault. It's just it's is what it is. So, luckily for us, we like I said, <laughs> <laughs> we've lost our, the workshops and school Ten groups. Ten avenues of income and, pretty much down to. But um, we have farm boxes, and we really appreciate the farm box customers and the support. Um, that's one of the positive things, I think, that's um, been on this year was the – the 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 farm box program has grown and we are now supporting other urban farms and food artisans and artisans and so um we've sort of bonded uh, banded together and created this sort of micro economy local um, cooperative and so that's been one of my positive highlights i think for for the year um jordan what about yours i think it was the barnyard expansion or whatever um yeah they've had a kind of a vision of transforming the barnyard area. It's not quite finished, but it's on its way. Um, just transforming it and, you know, being more efficient and uh, adapting with the times. And so just actually taking, you know, biting the bullet and at least starting that and, you know, not quite finishing it. I'm looking for those certain pieces of uh, fencing I need. But it's, um, it's quite, quite beautiful and it's definitely a a better way to for me to have my chickens and my ducks and um yeah that was quite something I've been you know planning on for like probably the last four years I believe and just kind of saw it in my mind's eye and finally to actually create it and it kind of anchored a part of the yard that was kind of not forgotten it was one of those areas where we didn't quite know what to do and um it because of um the neighbors trees had changed the um the had changed the um landscape there 
you know, lack of a better word. So to take advantage of it, you know, we we not only changed the barnyard and made it visually appealing and and just a, a larger expanded, it, yeah. but we increased the number of our chickens and ducks. And, and now we have the rainbow colored eggs, green, blue, mm -hmm. and it went. And then I eggs. I kind of went a little crazy and bought every every chicken breed I've ever wanted. Well, not quite. Not I yet. still have some no, that I still, still want. I still, we still have five. Yes. We want I have five for... I have to find. Um, but, you know, sometimes, interesting thing is, sometimes when you don't look for something, they come to you. So I'm not like, I'm looking for this particular chicken. I'll find it. It'll come when mm -hmm. it comes. And, you know, interesting, we got a, we got two ducks I wasn't looking for. <laughs> that Those sweetest little things, and they're lovely, and they just yeah, came to just... us. So, you know, it, things will come when when you just kind of sit back and just wait for them to happen, particularly when it comes to animals. <laughs> well, I know we still, <laughs> we're, still we're, we're still waiting on um, getting some of the walking uh, goats so we can go walking. Uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, baby goats is on the next. Um, there's a couple things that have to be put into place, like um, some volunteers that are a little bit more uh, committed to animal uh, husbandry, animal husbandry yeah. like someone that I could train that wants to give, you know, you know, commit to four months of, you know, learning everything about, you know, holistic animal husbandry. Um, when that happens, and a couple other things that need to be put in place, but um, I was very close to coming home with two baby goats, but um, my reason just said wait. And yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I will wait, but they will happen at yeah, some point. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who have tuned in, knew that uh, I think you followed the story that ha one of our baby ducklings, which were all sexed to be females, one of them, and which we named Hazel, one of them turned into a Harry. So and Harry um, will be going to live to, with uh, twelve other ducks. So his harem, he won't, he won't be <laughs> missing anything. He'll he be going with his. You but know. You can, I didn't think you can hear him. They're yeah. going. In, they are going in for the night. So He's going to live him. on five acres with twelve other ducks. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> oh, by a lady who feeds him frozen peas every morning and tucks them away and sings them a song every night when she puts them to sleep. What song did yes. she sing to them? I didn't want to ask. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's what maybe I have. I haven't. Well, the, our, 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 I sing to them in the morning. I sing to them in the morning. Um, but yeah, we have, the, I guess, the, sort of that egg lover's dream of the rainbow collection of of all the different colors and well, so it's beautiful and yeah so we have the chocolate the speckle the blue sort of egg and green eggs what's the and one that sounds like it's dying <laughs> <laughs> she's a blue, she's a blue lace wind up but she is you know she sounds like a child crying yeah for some reason because they started thanks to the school cutting their trees because we're if, if you're familiar with our property and it we're follows us on um you know the Instagram trees. and Facebook. You know that we're surrounded on two two sides by a school which have large trees, and so in the winter time they cut it, cut them down for us so that we can get light on and our sun. solar panels and and sun on sunlight on the chicken coop. So um, after they cut them, the eight, of course they started the chickens started laying like crazy. So one of them, the blue lace wind up, she. We we for, we couldn't we figured out Lady or Lady Godiva because yeah, she looks Godiva, so yeah. like Paris looking yeah. like she's posh from yeah. Paris. But anyhow, um, she just <laughs> I was away for a it's couple a days. Moaning. It's, a it's moaning. like no, I don't even try. Like, don't even I, like, so bad. I was away for I a couple been. days and she started laying and I, and I walked <laughs> her in the backyard like, what is that and I was like, is still kid crying? <laughs> my sister said that's the blue lace wine dot. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me! I, all my years of raising chickens, all my years of being around chicks, I never heard of a chicken that sounded like a, a like a child a crying. Corner. No, it's like a it's like a. Yeah, it's ah! just like, ah! <laughs> That's what it's, it's like. It's really bad. She's and it, not very ladylike. It makes my, Maybe I have to change her name. It's it not makes lady. my uh, anxiety go up because it's like you almost feel like a child crying. I know. Like pain. Uh, I know. It's like, so I was wondering, it's like, is she okay? I mean, it's, you know, if anybody ever had a miniature goat when it went into heat, it's like, you know, a dying moose. That's what yeah. I always described it as. <laughs> and this one's kind of, it's almost like we have a goat in heat in the backyard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty bad. I always was like, is that the I'll goat? Have to, I'll have to record it for, for you have Instagram. You to put it on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, one of these days. And if anybody has, I'd like to hear it because I've well, never. Like, yeah, name maybe have that name that sound that what do they have on uh, the local radio the station? Local station name that sound. Thousand we'll yeah. dollars. <laughs> no. Maybe we'll we'll put her sound into name so that put it up there. I'm thinking I might make it my ringtone. Oh, yeah. That's what it sounds. <laughs> we can we can make it our ringtone. I don't know. It sounds like somebody's dying. That's what's sad. It's, but. it's very. Uh, it makes you like. 
not skin crawl. It makes you like you seize up as like something. I mean, as women, not pleasant. It's yes. not pleasant. So I'm like not not live very lady. As women lady. who raise you know animals, you're always in tune to that sound. And when I hear it, it's just like my body heart races. <laughs> I'm like something's in pain. Something's dying. You know. Well, we did have a we did have a little incident with one of our other uh, the I think. Frida is a silky. She's about, what, eight eight years old? Yeah, so? she's pretty old. Well, for some reason, I don't know, can't, you know, days are blurry. Clean up the coop. But we go, so we finally got our first rain in like a bazillion years. We've, it's pretty dry here. And it, it's pretty dry. It was so dry, we didn't even hook up the rain gutter. It's too rain. It's yeah, too anyhow, rain. it rained dry. like, it, the, well, then it in rained. One night it cloud burst. Yeah, cloud burst. It was like thunder, lightning. It was, it was like, you know, Noah's flood. But anyhow, um, so we had put this, there was a straw bale that we were put into, um, we like to freshen up the coop and we just put it in and we put it up against the, the garage. Um, and so uh, whatever. And then I went a couple of days later to, to put out the straw and there was Frida behind the straw bale with two, two eggs. And I guess she got behind there somehow. Broody. Don't ask me how broody. She's a broody one for sure. Well, silkies. Yeah. If anybody knows silkies, they're yeah. constantly They're broody. really good for uh, if you want to hatch a clutch of eggs anyhow so she got back there and she kind of wedged her for her leg and it, and i put her down and she could barely could barely walk i was like oh great and she seemed to have um not you know disoriented a little bit so i gave her some nutrigent which jordy can tell you that's like the best thing you can give a chicken or any uh, animal. I will when the yeah. I will when the company actually yes. sponsors, sponsors me. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. no. Anyhow, no I, like I, I tell everybody about yeah. it. Anyways. Nutrigent <laughs> is like the best thing. It was like it's an IV for generally. It's a it's a it's a drench. You, yeah, you drench it into the animal, and it it pretty much has saved. It, yeah, it pretty much has saved every um, you know chicken I could save that was savable. <laughs> yeah, so so we did that and. Um, and then uh, I massaged her, her her legs a little bit, and uh, and she's fine. So like I said, she acts like nothing happened. So I was like a little scared, as with anybody, uh, any flock it, yeah, owner. This, you just it was about four inches against the, from the wall. Yeah, that, well, yeah. she's a little silky, but I know, she's, but I know. but she apparently laid those two eggs. Yeah, so whatever. But anyways, so, yeah. all I'll, all's well that ends well. But yeah, it's, but you always have that concern. But yeah, animals. she was. Well, you little know, little when you have animals, it's life and death, and yeah. concern about safety and health, and it's very much mom mode when you're back there. You're always looking at something they can mm -hmm. get into. If they can get into trouble, they will. Yeah. So, but that's like I said, it's just always something with animals, and um, yeah. So and then, uh, so speaking of rain, I mean, like I said, you're you're what's scary is you're watering in. The winter it's and way that's too dry. pretty dry. It's too it's dry. Beautiful well, weather. We had one one day of rain and that's it. And I it's, mean, like measurable rain. It's like in the last summertime. It's nine beautiful. Months. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty pretty dry. We we're fortunate to get that one storm. It's supposed to be the eighty five on Thursday. Eighty five um, degrees. Eighty five degrees in January. So it's not a good not a good time of year to be dry in our rainy season. Uh, we only have three or four months. Um, where our rain comes, it is a La Nina year, so the chances are slim. But we're not; we're still holding out hope that we can get some more mm -hmm. rain. Yeah, and there's always Miracle March mm -hmm. and fabulous February. Mm -hmm. That would the, sometimes it does yeah. happen, but so I guess another one of the highlights for us is the the interns seeing them um, really blossom here, learning urban farming and just stay insane during these, you know, pandemic times. So um, we've heard so, so many times and time and time again that, you know, thank you for having this place for them that, you know, opening our doors to them so they can come here and just get grounded and go home with good food. I mean, anything that, so any of the interns said at the end of the year you want to share? I mean, we, we lost a bunch to COVID because I mean, not lost, like they like, didn't die. Don't no, say that. <laughs> we lost. Yeah. The, you know, they some didn't come back. Yeah, yeah some stayed yeah. home. Some went back Due to, to the COVID, families. Due to COVID, some didn't come back. Uh, several moved away. Mm -hmm. Back home. Went to well, England, they, back yeah. to England, went to Florida, went home. There was students. There was no, uh, there was no, youth, there was no school, yeah. so they just gave up on, you know, online mm -hmm. classes. The and, rent. And, the, and went and, back to home. They went home. Yeah. So not lost, like, that way, but... Um, it definitely changed up some things. We do have a core group um, They come in every week that do help out. 
Um, still, still working on some of the areas of the yard that we haven't mm -hmm. touched. Uh, yeah, we, we did, did a get really a greenhouse. Good. We got a greenhouse this year uh, that's nestled right up against the chicken coop, so that was nice. Um, I just finished putting some cuttings in there this weekend, try to get the wheatgrass set up. You did some cleaning in the front yard. Uh, oh, we like... re-landscaped the front yard for the umpteenth time. It like seems, we always say. <laughs> it, it seems like the umpteenth time. We're, like you said, with our customer base changing and the weather changing and the climate changing, we're always tweaking the front yard. And this one, toward the front side, we reorganized and... And my sister cut back everything and cleared it up. Um, <laughs> was that a, a dig? Yes, oh. it was. She just took a scissors and took everything to... Well, uh, everything needed to be cut down. <laughs> it was one of those things you get in like a mood. And, and a like zone. I said, a zone. And, and then you just start to see all the things dead to be stuff. Cut back. And, and it kind of... Like, it was it's, green. It's a... Um, <laughs> Well, some of this stuff was there. Okay, Anyhow. we take this off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, uh, what do you call it, therapeutic? I think it was my well, therapy. You know, they, so. I mean, everything gets woody and yeah. overgrown. I mean, Anyhow. Yeah, some of this stuff, unfortunately, due to COVID, due to um, dad's passing, some of them I haven't got to pruning. So yeah. Nisi volunteered her services and... <laughs> <laughs> and pruned a lot of stuff. I think stuff. she Let's was just that. working out some stuff. I was end working of out year, some stuff. <laughs> end of year. Um, As I said, it was therapy. It was mm -hmm. cheaper than therapy. So. <laughs> well, they say gardening is great therapy. Well, I did a lot of therapy. You yes. can see it in the front yard. If anybody wants to come and as farm box customers and everybody drive by the front there's yard. There's a little bit more called, therapy that has to happen. Yeah, there's there. a little bit more therapy that has to happen for sure. Which we can provide on the yeah. other <laughs> places as well. Uh, but like I said, it has we had been. a lot of therapy. Yes. Um, and like... For those of you who don't know that it's been four years since our um, dad passed away. He passed away in December, so um, 2016. 2016. So it's you know December is a little rough for us. Holidays, it's just everything. He's, you know, it's winter time, time for reflection, time to just take stock of what you know what transpired through that ye the year you know that happened and pounded by yeah the mess of 2020 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i, I pretty, censored myself there. yeah it's pretty i pretty, <laughs> mean you don't like my garbage fire sticker? I, I gave you that sticker yeah, dumpster yeah, fire in 2020 sti sticker <laughs> i gave I, you that sticker i got two more <laughs> okay anyway. it's not it's just a uh, timey well basically the last two weeks in december not it's time for us to reflect, and we're not. Sometimes we're. Some days we're not. How do you say that? We don't want to be around anybody but that way. And <laughs> including uh, not, each other <laughs> <laughs> or ourselves. Or ourselves. <laughs> but we were able to take some time out, go for some walks and some hikes, and uh, take a break, finish some projects, uh, start some projects. Um, it's not all, you know, doom and gloom, but it's still, it's still. Farming is hard work. This life is not not it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, because it's like a business. Not only running, you know, growing food and running a business. It's and you know, interns and emails. And it's just, it's just a lot. And so, speaking of um, doing new projects, one of the new projects started and hopefully be done by um, the end of January, um, beginning of February, is uh, launching a new online store for our CSA. Uh, subscription platform which is going to be pretty cool we're really excited about that it's going to be amazing it's going to have uh, online support so people who are needing help to order they don't have to call us while Justin's trying to pack 100 boxes and doesn't want anybody to bother him um, they can um, have a little on, um, have a little chat with uh, somebody that Let's online just put support it, it's so. a labor of love yes the farm boxes are a labor of love that we is finally, we finally sure. increased their prices after <laughs> 10, 15 years, we went up $2, which is like 8%. Um, the packing materials, it's costing the, the a lot. Process software was costing, the mm -hmm. packing materials costing, and everything is going up. Yeah, so well, we, this, online, this online software is also going to transition into yeah. an Shipping. online store as well. So the things that can be shipped, I mean, mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of followers in other mm -hmm. states, and we've been kind of... We did it for a while, and then we kind of uh, restructured and kind of just went back local. But um, we do have products that I believe are good for other people and uh, branded products. And yeah, the acorn mixes mm -hmm. can be definitely shipped. So oils. anything, yeah, yeah. So anything. We're kind of relaunching. If if some of you longtime followers know knew, uh, 
No, we ran an online store for a while, but we uh, took a break. Um, things were changing in software world, and there was tax problems world. with oh. California taxes, and we were just like, couldn't handle it. It was like around the time four years ago, and so we just shuttled it. Um, but now uh, I'm ready to revisit that, um, streamline, and do urban homestead products mm -hmm. from the farm, created by Annie and I or Justin. Um, if they're not from the farm, they're uh, sourced. Uh, sourced and approved and created by um, us, like I have a couple products in mind that I'm going to have them manufactured and start distributing, um, you like know, the black, my uh, ideas yeah. um, through manufacturing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't I really grow everything that I want to sell, but it would have definitely be approved yeah. and sourced. And then the store would be, uh, we're setting it up where... Uh, a percentage of the profits will go directly into the nonprofit. So in the nonprofit, you have, you say, about, probably by the end of this month, uh, the Urban Homestead Institute website will be up. Mm -hmm. We appreciate people's, um, there's some podcast listeners that have donated and supported the nonprofit this year, and we really are grateful and appreciate that. Uh, even though the pandemic has put a pause on the program. Well, we started it, we had a goal, and then we <laughs> did not, it, like, what? We started, like, almost, what, four months later when pandemic happened? Yeah. So we never really got it off the ground with our vision. Mm -hmm. But so, we're but still, we're now still back on it. to it and, like, pivoting. Like, yeah. okay, so that vision has to be put on hold for now, so what are we doing with the nonprofit? Yeah. So now revisiting it and developing it. Into yeah. the new the new era that we are in at this yeah. moment. Yeah, so it looks like right right now it's virtual. We're going to do a couple virtual, call, you know, field, quote virtual field trips uh, with the local school. So we're I guess the future is online for a little at bit for a while. <laughs> the time being for the time being. So um, there was a moment when all the when you know the restrictions were lifting and everything. And we tentatively put tour yeah, because we were allowed to because yeah. Huntington had it. Yeah. I mean, it was allowed uh -huh. by law. And then we just like, as soon as we tentatively put it, things started going bad again. We're like, oh, nope, took it off. So. Yeah. So, I mean, we could probably figure that out. I mean, uh, you can go to the Huntington Gardens now. I just have to it figure probably out probably has to be one-on-one -on -one tours. Yeah, one-on-one. Because -on -one, like I said, this place is so small. It's, social distancing is a little challenging. Um, any other things you want to share? Highlights, low Con lights, consulting, middle lights? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, I was going to say another light, but I think that would be a copyright or a trademark thing. But any any lights? Any lights? <laughs> headlights? High, low, uh, headlights? headlights. <laughs> no lights? Um, let's see. Yeah, the to-do list never ends. Let's see what we got. Yeah, what are you looking forward to? Okay, let's do this last thing. Go a little round here. What are you looking forward to? I know, like I said, resolutions, that's kind of the, you know. But just, like, what are you looking at forward to in 21? Wow. Um, more efficiency, more, like, just growing more stuff. Or just basically, how about just trying catching to. Catching up? <laughs> or, try, you know, trying to navigate still the pandemic. Like I said, it's going to be a different year. You know, weddings. You know, Mother's Day, Valentine's, all the stuff that we You know planned. you have to pull out all those nasturtiums, right? I know. So, I know. It's going to be interesting. Basically, try to survive 21. Unless yes. you make a product out of them. You sell them to the, you sell it to the olive oil lady. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can do nasturtium vinegars. Yeah. yeah, but you have to figure out that whole, you know, that whole wall mm -hmm. is not I'm be... just saying, you pivot, pivot, yeah. okay? We can bottle them somehow. And, yeah, maybe we'll help. Yeah. Maybe work with Beyond the Olive and... Yeah, like I'm just saying it's going to be it's going to be a different. You know, yeah. we're going to have a. Um, last year we did the strawberries and the roses, mm -hmm. and thing we did have a little burst of flower sales at the end of the year for one of our clients. But uh, you have to work on the profitability of that. Uh, the stuff we grew for the caterers, um, the tomatoes. I was disappointed this year because they sort of. The pandemic happened while I was growing tomatoes, so the tomatoes sort of outgrew my trellising, mm -hmm. and they sort of fell over on each other. I'd like to get the trellising down better. Um, I was very happy with the cucumbers and the t the other tomatoes that I got ahead of. Um, the basil, not so much. I mentioned squash was good. The beans were good. Yeah, but, so just um, hopefully have a good year, especially, like I said, we need rain. So. Yeah, irrigation is going to be, if it doesn't rain, I'm going to get the irrigation <laughs> uh, down or mm -hmm. redo the irrigation, because, mm -hmm. and that's going to cost uh, a bit. So mm -hmm. 
I'm not looking forward to irrigation if I to have to water all year round. Yeah. But this was our quote downtime. Yeah. So um, we'd like to upgrade our refrigeration for the cool bot mm-hmm. and some walk-in fridge. We currently have five uh, refrigerators working on farm box day to keep everything cool. Um, we'd like to upgrade our that um, whether it's in the basement or a shed or whatever. Yeah, sort of more low tech uh, solution than. High energy suckers high energy like things. So that's one of our. Like to get the refrigeration down. Like to get some of the s- grow more things. Mm-hmm. In terms of seedlings, it's the seeds and plants are getting due to the pandemic. Uh, like canning they're getting, jars, they're getting scarce. Canning jars are hard to find. Seeds and plants are getting hard to find, mm-hmm. and the prices are going up. So I'd like to grow more of our own. And so I did place a couple hundred dollar, five hundred dollars worth of seeds to our a couple of companies and they said please note it'll be you know <laughs> a long time before you get this order so oh, don't complain so i gotta make another order for another company um, i thought i was ahead of the game but nope. they said it's gonna be like five days before we even process wow, your order crazy. and it's january well i guess that's good news people, a lot more people grow their own food so the candy jars are just <laughs> brutal yeah. to find now and so jordan what would you kind of Look, kind well, of looking forward see. to expansion, I believe, and growth. Um, it's been mentioned before. It's been like four years. I mean, it took us a while to stabilize everything. Um, but I think, well, 2020 was going to be the year, honestly. <laughs> it was like I t- ran into 2020 going with all these plans and ideas and just kind of thought, you know, th- you know, they said four months and things would go away. No, it's the new. So now just had to do a lot of thinking. And okay, so now 2021, looking forward to expansion in some ways. Um, like I said, pivoting the business, um, bringing to market some of the products that are in mind, um, actually getting to a lot of the projects that were shelved, mm-hmm. like, um, I, you know, uh, Dad had some like ideas of like you know like s- just some of his sayings would make really good graphic design things I want to do and I would like to you know make them beautiful and maybe sell those as well um, and to grow the nonprofit into what it should be um, and then also through that to expand um, you know with Dad's vision into other places he never really wanted to just. Um, this was his this is where he wanted to start but he also had dreams of other places like he wanted to grow and expand um into you know other countries we still hail from other countries that they they want you know to learn from us um so trying to set that groundwork and to um just keep an eye on uh how to make everything efficient and sustainable i'm looking forward to possibly bringing more goats back into my life and then uh, kind of working a little bit, you know, exploration of sharing an alpaca with a friend. <laughs> friend, like, can they, can this work? Like, he has a little bit more land and he wants a alpaca, but he doesn't want to take care of it. So, mm, I'm kind of exploring that option. So that'd be really exciting if I can make that happen. Mm-hmm. I just have to. Um, my last month and month, two months was purging and mm-hmm. purging. Um, there was a quote that says. Um, you know, is it worth the time, the stuff that you have in your life? And so I've just been going down and it's not Maria Kondo or anything, but just like, hey, this I haven't thought about this in five years. Just dump, you know, yeah. and just getting down to clean and then uh, that efficient. way, you know, efficient, make myself, uh, f- you know, able to maybe take on a couple things that, yeah. um, you know, uh, that I've been dreaming about for a long time, you know, um, mm-hmm. maybe even, you know baby cows or something you know there's a lot of things rolling around this head of mine yeah, short, no shortage of ideas yeah so no shortage well, of time i get to work with some i get to work with some rescue yeah. group with you know cows and horses and you know that that fulfills that idea a little bit yeah. but i i would like to uh grow more back into the heritage breeds which has always been my passion yeah that's all good stuff like i said no lack of ideas so for me i guess just be more efficient um just you know make because there's a lot of work and sometimes you feel like you're spinning a lot of plates it's just making that effort count and not having to just you know so just be more efficient more organized um so that we can do these the programs um more efficiently mm-hmm. and quicker 
Um, well, allow, so like, you know, with the volunteers, allowing them in a bit and yeah. take over some of the areas that we need to take over. Yeah, yeah so, well, that was um, 30 minutes of... Hindsight? Uh, <laughs> of, yeah, 2020, <laughs> hindsight, and looking forward. So, I don't know about everybody, but I, like I said, it's there's a lot of things to say about, like, last, you know, last year and what's coming up. It's, you know, it's uncertain... Um, but we do, one thing we know for certain is the the homestead. You know, the chickens and the ducks could care less what, like I said, what goes on in the news and in politics and whatever. Everybody has the the chickens have to eat, and the water and the plants need to be fe- uh, watered. So that is something that's for sure, and that's what we are thankful for. Um, sort of, I don't know if this time of year, I I kind of one of the quotes that there's a lot of quotes but one of them was the um if you're familiar everybody's familiar with the lord of the rings but it was uh frodo was saying to gandalf that you know he had wished this this had not happened in his time and gandalf said um that you know well, that we all live to see such times but it's not for them to decide so of course no way. yeah so but what to decide to what we do with this time so it's uh, deciding what we do with this time is, uh, I think, key to uh, the future. And for us, it's growing food and community. So, um, yeah, everybody's yeah. got to eat. Yeah, everybody's got to eat. So we thank everybody for uh, their support and, uh, again, the feedback and um, the community that we've created here. And we hope you continue to like these podcasts. And we hope that you can maybe send us some, if you have some questions that we can maybe take in this time. Oh, that's right. Um, One of my ideas is I'm going to have a uh, floating idea of having a call in recorded. Yeah. Um, People can ask questions and leave a message and we'll answer. Instead of like writing it out, texting us, they can leave a message on this special machine and then we will answer the questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that might be another idea. So Mm -hmm. talk up another to do thing. So uh, until next time. We just wish everybody to be safe and well and happy and keep on growing. So thank you for tuning in. Thank Thank you. you. We love to hear your feedback or questions. Visit us at urbanhomestead.org to check out what's happening on the homestead. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And until next time, keep on growing.